Starting off this countdown, we have Zone Rogue. Zone Rogue, sometimes called the Red Zone or Zone Rouge, is an area in northeastern France that got destroyed during World War I. After the war, the land was declared 100% damaged with devastating effects with devastating effects on the agriculture. It was said to be impossible to clean and human life there was said to be impossible. So the French government prohibited anyone from going there. In fact, this area is littered with human and animal remains and millions of unexploded weapons. So it's literally dangerous to go there. All you need to do is be traveling there and you set off an explosive. That would not end well. In our ninth spot, we have Discovery Island. Discovery Island is now an abandoned park by Disney that opened in 1970. It was located in the middle of Bay Lake by Disney World. In order to get to it, visitors would take a boat from Disney World. The park was known for having an incredible amount of exotic birds from all over the world. The attraction was basically like a miniature zoo. But in 1989, it was revealed that Disney wasn't taking proper care of the animals on the island. And the employees were caught doing some messed up things to the animals. In 1998, Animal Kingdom opened and people just really didn't care about Discovery Island anymore. The island closed in 1999 for undisclosed reasons and all of its animals got moved to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now the island is just completely abandoned. Its structures are covered in nature, but it's illegal to go there. In fact, you're not allowed to get within 50 feet of its shoreline, and you'll be arrested if caught trespassing. There are a number of examples of people getting arrested for trying to get on this island. Just last year, some man was arrested after he was found camping out there. In April of 2020, Richard McGuire was arrested for visiting the island as well. Kind of makes you wonder why that area is so highly patrolled. Coming in at number eight, we have Lascaux Caves in France. The Lascaux Caves are a series of complex caves located in northwestern France. Back in the day, four teens were exploring the caves with their dog when they found a narrow entrance into a cavern. In the cavern, they discovered a plethora of prehistoric cave paintings. These paintings are anywhere from 15,000 to 17,000 years old. They mainly depict animals. In 1948, the caves were open to the public, but in 1963, they were closed. The artificial light was fading the vivid colors of these paintings. And then algae started growing all over them. So in order to preserve the history, they prevent anyone from going there. The only exception is a small number of scientists. They can go there only a few days a month in order to study the paintings. Other than that, no one else can go. Moving on to number seven, we have Room 39 in North Korea. North Korea has its fair share of secrets. Kim Jong-un likes it that way. He doesn't want anyone knowing what he's up to. Now, Room 39 is a top secret, highly guarded location inside of the Workers' Party building in Pyongyang. Journalist Kelly Olson said, and I quote, Room 39 is one of the most secret organizations in arguably the world's most secretive state. Only a few select people have access to this room. It was created in the late 1970s and no one really knows what goes on in there. But it's reported that it's very critical to the Kim family. And I'm sure you can imagine what the guards would do if you were caught trespassing or attempting to break into the room. It would not end pretty. Moving on to number six, we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Club is this group of rich men who meet in the Bohemian Grove in California every July. Among the attendees are US presidents, government members, and business leaders. You get the picture. Some very wealthy men. Some say that this is like a cult. Everything that goes on there is top secret. Apparently, what happens at the Bohemian Grove stays at the Bohemian Grove. In 2000, filmmaker Alex Jones and his cameraman snuck into the camp and filmed a Bohemian Grove ceremony. It was called the Cremation of the Care. Sounds very creepy. Here's a section of what he captured. Again, Midsummer sets us free. <laughs> and halfway mark with Paviglia, Italy. This island has a very, very dark past. During the Middle Ages, when the plague took the lives of thousands, this island was used as a dumping ground for the bodies. According to some reports, 50% of the island's soil consists of human remains. 
Then in the 1920s, the island had a mental institution, but the hospital workers were corrupt and often conducted experiments on the patients. Then over the years, the island has been bought and sold three times. The first two owners sold the island after witnessing some paranormal activity. It's said that the souls of the deceased haunt the island. In fact, to this day, this island is known as one of the most haunted places on earth. Now the island is just abandoned and no one is allowed to visit it. I mean, you can, but you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. In the end, it's not really worth it. In our fourth spot, we have Pripyat, Ukraine. I mean, it's kind of obvious why this one's on the list. So Pripyat was a city in Ukraine that had a population of 49,000 people. However, on April 27th, 1986, all residents were forced to evacuate following the Chernobyl disaster. Pripyat was the most affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster since they were the closest to the power plant. They were the ones most exposed to the radioactive chemicals. Due to the radiation, the city will be left untouched for thousands of more years until it's safe enough to return. But of course, there have been a number of explorers that have gone there to check out the city's ruins. But like I said, because of the radiation levels, it's deemed too unsafe to go to, and people are warned not to. In our third spot, we have the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs are a series of tunnels located under Paris, France. In the 18th century, the catacombs were created when the Paris cemeteries were full. They needed a place to bury the dead. As a result, they buried the dead underground in a series of tunnels. There is approximately 150 miles of tunnels in a maze-like fashion, making it extremely easy to get lost. Ever seen the movie As Above, So Below? Now, a portion of these tunnels are still accessible today and have attracted numerous explorers. But there's an area in the Paris catacombs that is completely blocked off from the public. It's because it's extremely easy for you to get lost with the number of pathways they have. Also, there's over 6 million people buried there, so maybe not go there. A couple of years ago, two young explorers went into the band area and went missing for three full days. Finally, the authorities, along with their team of rescue dogs, found the boys in the tunnels. Thankfully, they both survived, only suffering from hypothermia. It could have ended much worse. In our second spot, we have Pluto's Gate in Turkey. Back in the day, it was believed that anything that entered this area would be killed by the god Pluto himself. On a number of occasions, animals like bulls would be led into this cavern. They would never make it back out alive. As a result, people were terrified to go anywhere near there. But a couple of years ago, it was discovered what was actually causing this. Scientists noticed that at night, the CO2 concentration would become heavier in the air. CO2 is not normally toxic, but in high concentrations, it is, and will starve the body of oxygen. So yes, if you go there, the level of CO2 is so strong that you could die from asphyxiation. It's super dangerous, and as a result, people are banned from going there. And in our number one spot, we have Wyndham, Australia. Located northeast of Perth, Australia, Wyndham is considered one of Australia's deadliest towns. This is because of its blue asbestos problem. In 1937, blue asbestos was discovered in the city's gorge. Years later, miners were unearthing tons of asbestos from the ground. It wasn't until 1978 that the government started pushing people out of their homes. They realized how deadly it was for them to be living there. It was increasing their risk for cancer, and in some cases, people were already developing lung cancer just from living there. Now, it would cost the town about $2.43 million to get rid of this asbestos problem. So instead of doing that, they just shut down the town completely. In 2006, the government turned off power to the town and had its name removed from maps and road signs. In fact, all roads that once led to this town are now closed off. If you do choose to enter this town, you'll find tons of huge warning signs advising you to turn back. Starting off this countdown, we have the Forest Lake Russia. This one is very strange, okay? Located somewhere within a huge forest in Russia is this beautiful yet mysterious lake. Mysterious because the exact location remains unknown. Someone found it while doing aerial photography. They were up in the sky flying over this forest when they found this huge lake. 
Another reason why it's mysterious is because no one really knows how the lake was actually created. Like, it's smack in the middle of a dense forest. Over the years, a number of people have attempted to find this lake, but no one has successfully managed to. As a result, there's a number of websites out there dedicated to finding the lake. And a number of posts have been made from people asking if anyone knows anything about it. Will we ever find this mysterious lake? Who knows? Who knows? And at number nine, we have University Women's Club. This is a female only club that was founded in 1888 London. It was a space for women to come to just relax and unwind, not having to worry about their household duties or whatever. It was also a professional space where business meetings would take place. This club also offered 22 bedrooms so that you could stay if need be, and two big event rooms should you ever need to rent them out for private parties or whatever. This place was open for all women of all ages, just no men. Moving on to number eight, we have the International Club of Paris. The Women's International Club of Paris, or Le WIC de Paris, was a club open to any and all women. Its goal is to get women of all different nationalities living in or around Paris to join this club and share their culture with others in the group. The group does things such as film screenings, book clubs, and would do activities like gymnastics and learn other languages. This club is pretty big. They have 252 members from 52 different countries. Again, there's no men allowed in this club. It's strictly women coming together to learn more about each other and form connections. They also say that the space is non-political and non-religious. They just want everyone to get together as one. Moving on to number seven, we have Noiva de Cordeiro. This is a remote Brazilian village that is home to 600 women. Now this village is interesting for a number of reasons. Number one, most of the women living there are 20 to 35 years old, like that's pretty young. On top of that, they are known to be all stunningly beautiful. Now this village is a bit different than the other places on this list. Men are allowed to visit, but typically they don't live there. But the only time they can visit is on the weekends. They are forced to work away from home and that's the only time that they have to visit. But most of the women that live there run the show. They work in the field and manage all the village's finances. They're like the bosses. Coming in at number six, we have New Woman Space. Founded by Wong and Sandra Hong, New Woman Space, located in Brooklyn, is a place where women can come together as one. It's located in Williamsburg and is specifically for entrepreneurs or those looking to collaborate with other women. At this location, they have book club meetings and yoga classes. The founder Wong says, and I quote, Our location means there is no shortage of women submitting new ideas for classes and workshops who want to host events in every realm you can think of and those who have found comfort and strength in knowing there is a community space for them. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the female only parties. This next city located in Colombia is famous for having a men's curfew night. Basically after a certain time at night, men are banned from leaving their homes. Literally. Bands. Like you could be fine for breaking this rule. Meanwhile, the women are free to roam the streets. On these nights, there are women only concerts, film shows, and parties. Fire and police stations are taken over by female only crews. It's a time for women to just, you know, let loose and have fun. According to the mayor who created this idea, he said these female only nights will reclaim public space for the women of Bogota and help men to get to know their homes. Moving on at number four, we have the sorority. And no, I'm not talking about like a college or university sorority here. The sorority is a club only for women. It's described as an online network for professional women who want to collaborate and inspire others. Most of the meetings take place online. But if you live in London, some members meet regularly at different venues in London. Apparently, there are a couple members of royalty in this club. Now, if you are a female and this interests you and maybe you want to join the club, too bad, too sad. You can only get in by invitation only, so it's a pretty secretive club. On top of that, you have to fill out their pledge which seems a little culty to me. But anyway, it seems like they want only the elite of the elite to be a part of this club. In our third spot, we have the Secret Society. Back in the 1840s, women were caught for having a number of different secret societies in New York. These societies were legit top secret. They didn't want men finding out about them at all. 
but this plan failed. In 1847, four of these secret societies were caught. Back then, it was a pretty big deal. Now, there's not much out there on these societies like what went down since it was so long ago. But apparently the government tried to break them up if they heard about them. When four clubs got exposed, they realized just how big they were. One society had 2,000 members. Like that's insane. But yeah, with the amount of members, word was bound to get out sooner or later. In our second spot, we have Woman's Land. Now this community spells its name Woman's, as in W-O-M-Y-N-S, instead of M-A-N-S, because they literally want nothing to do with men. No man in the name, no man ever allowed in the community. Now this community was fairly large. It started as a social movement in the 1970s in the US, Australia, New Zealand, and Western Europe. Basically, it was a group of women that wanted to escape the patriarchal society. So they decided to make their own community. Many of them still exist today. Back then, these women lived in the woods on private land. And honestly, a lot of people didn't know they existed. Some were meant specifically for women that identified as lesbian. Others were for women traveling across countries alone and needed a safe place to stay. Nowadays, there are still a few of these communities left. These women live in small cabins or shacks. The only issue is that these women are getting older and need a new generation of younger women to come and keep these communities alive. But not a lot of younger women are interested in this. And in our number one spot, we have Super She Island. Located off the coast of the Baltic Sea, the Super She Island is a secret vacation destination for only women. It's owned by a woman named Christina Roth. She first discovered this island while on vacation in Finland. From there, she purchased it and spent months doing massive renovations. Now the island has four renovated cabins that can hold up to 10 women. The whole purpose of this island is to look after the wellness of the female mind, bodies, and souls. While on the island, you can partake in a number of activities including yoga, meditation, kayaking, and hiking. Now, don't be fooled. It's not like you can just book a trip there and you're all set. No, you actually need to fill out an application. On the form, you have to write to Christina why you want to go to the island. And she is specifically looking for people that aren't just writing BS, but like actually truly want to go to the island to better themselves. Starting off this countdown, we have the Stairway to Heaven. The Stairway to Heaven or the Haiku Stairs is a very steep hiking trail that was closed in 1987. It was closed because of lack of maintenance of the trail and it was deemed unsafe. It's considered one of Hawaii's most dangerous trails, but that didn't stop 18-year-old Daylin Pua from hiking out there. On February 27th, 2015, Daylin went out for a hike. He had previously told his grandmother, who he was visiting, that he wanted to do so, but she warned him against it. Also, you can get charged if you do trespass but that didn't deter Daylin. On that day, he told his grandma he was going out for a hike, but she didn't think he would dare to go there. She was wrong. The last time anyone saw him was around 11 a.m. when he sent a photo to his family of him at that location. He never returned home. Of course, there are a number of theories as to what happened to him. Maybe he fell while on the hike since the area is dangerous. But then again, his body or bones were never found. Another theory is that he was kidnapped or killed by someone. In the photo he sent to his family, it said you can see a man lurking in the foliage. Was this his killer? Sadly, we might never solve this case. In our number nine spot today, we have Haji Ali Darga. This landmark is a mosque and Darga and was constructed in 1431. For a while, there was a ban placed on women being there before an arrangement was made which allowed women into the landmark, but the inner sanctum sanctorium was still off limits, unless of course you're a man. This restriction was said to be due to Islam and the fact that it is considered a sin for a woman to be in close proximity of the grave of a Muslim saint. Or at least that's what the internet told me was the reason. This is another place that has seen many protests about the ban and there have even been petitions circling to have the rule changed, but this is one of the times it actually worked. In 2016, the Supreme Court ruled that they would allow women the equal right to pray and they began being allowed in all of the same areas, which of course was a huge win. In our number eight spot today, we have Mount Omine. This mountain is the home of the Yamabushi monks and is famous for its three tests of courage. The ban on women was placed in order to help remove thoughts of temptation 
inspiration from the monks as they practice their strict lifestyle. This one is slightly different from some of the others on this list, however, as there have been many females who have still gone here with no trespassing charges ever placed or really much outcry at all. They refer to the ban as a more voluntary situation. Both the temple and the local community call it a request rather than a rule or a law, and the request is in order to respect their tradition as well as, of course, like I mentioned before, to help them. As much as I really don't like being banned from a place, I feel like this is a more reasonable way to do it if we have to, but maybe that's because I don't live in Japan where this rule directly affects me, so let me know in the comments down below what you think about these kinds of bans. In our number 7 spot today, we have Okinoshima, this Japanese sacred island which is the home to the 17th century shrine of Okitsu. This island only has a population of one, which is the single employee of the shrine. He is one of two dozen priests who spend 10 day intervals on the island to pray and protect it from intruders. The rules state that only men can travel to and worship at the island's shrines. The men will strip naked and perform a cleansing ritual before they enter the island, and they honor the sailors who passed away in a naval battle near the island during the 1904-1905 Russo-Japanese War. It isn't exactly clear why women are banned from this island, but it has something to do with Shinto traditions. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Galaxy Water Park. This water park located in Germany has a ban on women that I simply cannot wrap my head around. While women aren't banned from the water park entirely, they are banned from the park's highest speed water slide. This ban came after the owner of the park determined that the water slide was causing what is being called intimate injuries, and apparently this only happens to women. Apparently the slide can hit speeds up to 45 miles per hour, and apparently six women complained of suffering injuries. I really am not sure the details surrounding whatever is going on here, but to be fair, I'm not exactly sure if I would like to know either. But according to a gynecological association, other than pregnancy, there shouldn't be any sort of medical condition that would prevent a woman from going on a water slide. When I started making this list, this really wasn't the type of thing that I imagined including, because I never thought that this strange band would even exist, but here we are. <laughs> in our number five spot today, we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove is a privately owned campsite in Monterio in California, and is the home to the wealthy and exclusive Bohemian Club. It comes as no surprise that this club is only for men, despite the few dire attempts at including women. Every year, there is a two-week-long retreat that the club hosts on the private grounds, and while there have been four women who have been invited to the club as honorary members, the women are never invited to the Grove. Because of this weird ban and just the entire super strange nature of the whole ordeal, both the club and the Grove are part of many conspiracy theories. There has been no shortage of outsiders trying to sneak into the Grove to see what the heck is going on there and to get to the bottom of what this secretive club is really hiding. To be honest, there's definitely something sketchy going on with this whole thing because it really just does give off the weirdest vibes. In our number four spot today, we have Lord Kartikeya Temple. This temple is located in India and was built in honor of of course, Lord Kartikeya, who is the Hindu god of war. More specifically, the temple is paying homage to the celibate form of the Hindu deity. I guess with this knowledge, and also based on what video this is, you can guess what's going to come next. Women aren't allowed here. As this is a temple, it is of course for religious reasons, which are said to be why the rule came into place, but there's also a myth associated with this one. According to the myth, any woman who enters the temple will incur the deity's wrath and will be cursed. Considering the fact that he is the god of war, I feel like this might not be the one I want to risk. You know, just in case. I definitely am not trying to get cursed. In our number three spot today, we have Lord Ayapa's temple. This is a temple that doesn't ban all women, but just those from 10 years old to 50 years old. This is another ban that has its roots in myths that surround the deity and the fact that he is celibate. Apparently the deity thought of women as a distraction from the vow of celibacy, but despite this, this is one rule that might just be on its way out. Apparently the government has recently become more vocal about favoring the decision to reverse this age restriction and instead allow women of all ages to enter the temple. The conversation has already reached the Supreme Court, which is huge. I totally understand that these decisions, especially these ones that have their roots in faith and religion, should not be taken lightly at all and of course take time to discuss, but I think it can be appreciated that the conversation is happening at all. In our number two spot today, we have Saudi Arabia. Okay, so of course the whole country isn't just men, so you might be wondering why this is on the list, but that is to do with the rules around travel. 
travel. As a solo woman traveler, it would be extremely difficult to gain entry into the country. Women can be given visas for travel, but all female visitors must be accompanied by a male guardian. I don't make the rules. That's just how it is. Once in the country, women also aren't permitted to drive, and if you're heading there to visit someone's grave, better luck somewhere else because women are also banned from Saudi Arabian cemeteries. So if you're planning a trip anytime soon, there's just a few things to consider beforehand and many, many more if you're female. In our number one spot today, we have the Jain Temple. To end off our list today, we have another temple that doesn't have an outright ban on women, but just a few rules that of course are directed to affect women. Firstly, there's a very strict dress code, which seems fine and well, especially for a religious place, reasonable. But then we get into the more surprising rule, and that is that women who are menstruating are banned from entering the premises. I have a lot of questions about why, although I know it is because that is something that is seen as unclean, which I will not comment on, but my main question is to how exactly that is an enforceable rule. Either way, it is the rule, and unfortunately, I don't make the rules. Despite this being one of the more seemingly absurd rules on this list, it is good to know in advance if you ever had a plan to visit the temple. Starting off this countdown, we have the Tomb of Jin Shi Huang. In 1974 in China, a group of farmers came across something quite amazing. So they were digging a well when they dug out a life-size terracotta soldier. After that, archaeologists spent four decades excavating the site. They found an army of thousands of these terracotta soldiers. Experts say there's more than eight thousands of them. The soldiers are guarding the tomb of Jin Shi Huang, oh, which is off limits to everyone, including scientists. Why? Well, it's rumored that it's protected by deadly booby traps. Not only that, there's a high concentration of mercury in the tomb, which is very deadly for anyone if they entered without the proper equipment. So the tomb is off limits for any and everyone. In our ninth spot, we have room 39. Room 39 is a top secret room located in North Korea. The whole location is heavily guarded. They don't want anyone getting into this room. In fact, it's said to be one of the most secret places in North Korea, a place that's already so secretive. It was created in the late 1970s. Room 39 is the meeting place for a top secret North Korean party organization. They apparently get up to a number of illegal activities in that room, like counterfeiting, selling and producing drugs, and selling weapons. Apparently, they bring in 500 million to $1 billion per year through these illegal activities. So yeah, no wonder they don't want outsiders inside of this room. Should anyone try to get in? Well, I'm sure you can imagine what would happen. In our eighth spot today, we have Vale do Habare. Located in Brazil in the Amazon, this area is one of the largest indigenous territories in the world. It's home to a number of indigenous tribes. There are said to be 2,000 individuals belonging to at least 14 tribes living there. In fact, they remained uncontacted with until several years ago. But the Brazilian government has banned anyone from going there. It's illegal if you do so. This is because they want to protect the people living there. Any contact with the outside world could be dangerous to these individuals. We could transmit diseases and wipe them out. So in an effort to protect the tribes, it's illegal to visit the area. In our seventh spot, we have the Korean Demilitarized Zone. This is the area that marks the separation between South and North Korea. The only people that reside there are high-ranking officials. It's illegal for anyone else to visit the site. In fact, it's one of the most militarized zones in the world, so why would anyone even want to go there? In fact, they have enough weapons to bombard Seoul with over 10,000 rounds every minute. Now, the North Korean side primarily serves to stop an invasion of North Korea from the South. Up until 1972, over 7,000 Korean soldiers infiltrated North Korea. More than half of them lost their lives. In our sixth spot today, we have Metro 2. Located in Moscow, Russia, there is a secret underground metro system operated by the Russian Ministry of Defense. It's said that this system connects the Moscow Kremlin with the Federal Security Service headquarters. The only problem is, no one knows where it is. That's how secret it is. People know it exists, but they haven't been able to find where it is or how to get in. Either way, you're banned from doing so anyways. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Varosha Cyprus. 
Once upon a time in the early 70s, Verosha was a popular tourist attraction. In fact, it was one of the most popular ones in the world. That was until 1974 when Turkey invaded. As a result, all the residents had to flee or else they were killed. They were forcibly removed from their homes and were never allowed to come back. The Turkish military then took control of the whole area, and no one is allowed to enter. In fact, the whole area is now fenced off and under constant supervision. Not only that, but the army patrols have orders to shoot on sight. So people don't even want to take a chance by going even remotely close to there. In our fourth spot, we have Pine Gap. Located deep in the Australian outback is Pine Gap, a top secret military base. In fact, this base has been named Australia's Area 51. That's how mysterious it is there. This base is operated by the Australian government and by the CIA and the NSA. In 2013, it was revealed that the NSA uses this facility to collect internet and telephone records. When originally it was said that this place was just a space research center. Clearly, that was just one big lie. So this place is just a big place for intelligence activities and military operations. What's scary is that it's rumored that this base is home to one of the most terrifying surveillance systems out there, the Echelon. This is the code name given to a very secretive and intense surveillance program. So yeah, anyone caught trespassing, you're in huge trouble. In our third spot, we have Morgan Island. This is another island completely off limits, and that's because it's filled with monkeys. Now you might be thinking, oh, I love monkeys, they're so cute. No, okay? These monkeys are said to be infected by the herpes B virus, but it wasn't always like this. What happened was that the monkeys were originally from Puerto Rico, but then there was a viral outbreak among locals because the monkeys became overpopulated. So they tried to fix this problem by moving the monkeys to Morgan Island. In 1979, over 1,400 animals were relocated to Morgan Island. As a result, the island is off limits for your safety and the safety of the monkeys. Coming in at number two, we have Mount Weather, aka one of America's best kept secrets. No, I didn't just make that up, that's actually what it's called. This is a secret facility located in Virginia. In fact, for years, people were wondering if Mount Weather was actually real. It was just kind of rumored to be a thing. But alas, it is real. Mount Weather is an emergency operations center. They have an underground bunker there, so in case of emergency, they can keep all the government officials there in that bunker. They even have their own police department, fire department, and laws for this place. So we all know if there's an apocalypse, that's where the government will be hiding out. And of course, it's surrounded by armed guards, fences, and razor wires. And in our number one spot today, we have Russia's nuclear missile facility. In the Ural Mountains in Russia, there's a top secret town that no one is allowed to visit. This is because this is the place that Russia does their nuclear missile testing. As a result, no one is allowed to go in or even near the vicinity. Again, why would you even want to go anyways? That place is probably incredibly radioactive. It's also believed that around the area, the Russians have a secret bunker complex for the government and or the Russian armed forces. Let's get right into this list. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Mount Athos. This mountain and peninsula isn't only off limits to human females, but just every kind of female animal out there. This rule has been in place for more than a thousand years, so I don't really see this one changing at any time soon. This mountain is home to a monastery which houses about 2,000 monks, which is where this female band comes from. There have been women in the past who have snuck into the area in order to protest, but it has always been met with an outcry from the monks who say that the presence of the female not only alter the social dynamics, but slow their path to spiritual enlightenment. I'm not exactly sure how to feel about this one, as I can definitely respect people's religious practices and wouldn't want anyone coming into my path of enlightenment. But this ban, of course, also includes me. In, In our ninth spot, we have Yucatan Cenote. But before I go any further, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button, because it really helps us out. Located in southern Mexico, this place has tons of these natural pit type things called Cenote. Basically, it's a massive hole that forms after rocks underneath the ground break. 
and then it leaves a gap. This then exposes the groundwater that's underneath them. When the rock breaks down even more, water fills the hole, making it like a natural swimming pool. Now, they are quite beautiful, but they're also quite dangerous. Some of them you're allowed to swim in, but a bunch of them are off limits. Not only that, but some of them are hard to even get into, so people don't even bother. I mean, you'd have to be able to find a natural entrance and then, like I said, it's still hard to enter. As a result, a number of these holes have never been touched, swam in, or explored. Coming in at number 8, we have Mashurbroom, Pakistan. The Pakistan mountain Mashurbroom is said to be the world's hardest alpine to climb. In fact, this mountain is said to be way harder to climb than Mount Everest. Now, there was a part that was climbed in 1960, but the north side of the mountain has not been successfully topped yet. This route is extremely dangerous and difficult. So over 75 years of attempts, only 15 people have successfully summited the mountain. Again, no one on the northeast face before. People have tried, but they don't get very far. Since no one has done it before, there's not a lot of info out there on the layout of it. And like I said before, it's very, very difficult to climb. In our seventh spot, we have Mount Sippel, Antarctica. Mount Sippel is a 10,203 foot tall, potentially active volcano located in the Antarctic. It was named after Paul A. Sippel, who was a navigator and the discoverer of this shield volcano. And it's never been climbed. As a result, it is the highest point on the Antarctic continent that has not been climbed. This is due to a number of reasons. One, not a lot of people know about this volcano because it's in such a remote location. And two, not much is known about the mountain. That's why I said potentially active volcano. I mean, people think it is an active volcano, but we still don't really know since people haven't really explored it. In our sixth spot, we have the Impossible Tapui. These gigantic towers of rock are often named the Impossible Tapui because they are incredibly difficult to climb. These are located all across Venezuela and are just super tall with sharp, jagged edges. Not only are most of them unexplored from the outside, but most of them are also unexplored from the inside as well. Hundreds of these rock towers are composed of caves and paths on the inside. According to scientists, only a fraction of those have been explored. The most we have done is flown drones over them to check them out from different angles. But physically, no human has been to a majority of them. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Twilight Zone Reefs. Located in the Chagos Islands, these reefs are given their name due to the fact that they are part of the Twilight Zone in the ocean. But exploration of this area is limited because of how remote the islands are. On top of that, just recently, they implemented a new rule where divers can only go down 25 meters. After that, it's restricted. So there's still so much to learn about this reef. And there's many more areas around there that haven't even been explored. In fact, in general, very few of the world's coral reefs have been studied deeper than 4 meters. So that's kind of interesting. Coming in at number 4, we have the deserts. Due to the extreme weather conditions, deserts are one of the world's least explored areas. I mean, it's really hard to survive out there for a long period of time. It's inhabitable. The days are extremely hot, nights extremely cold, and it gets very little rainfall. So it's hard to grow plants out there. So who really wants to be out there exploring? Anyways, we're going to talk about the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert covers over 200 million square miles. Humans clearly haven't covered every inch of it. There are entire regions that have yet to be explored. Coming in at number 3, we have the Amazon Rainforest. The Amazon Rainforest holds half of the total rainforest on Earth. It's pretty insane. This thing is massive. It covers a total area of 2.5 million square miles. And it's home to beautiful animals and wildlife. But have it being that it's so big, there's tons of areas in the Amazon where humans have never been to. Maybe these areas contain new insects and species that are just waiting to be discovered. We truly don't know. It would take us years to cover all the grounds there. In fact, it is considered one of the least explored places on Earth. Isn't that just fascinating? Well, I mean, I think it is. One of the reasons this is the case is because not only is the forest filled with deadly animals, like, you know, jaguars and anacondas and Brazilian wandering spiders, but also 
Also, explorers would have a tough time getting access to enough food and clean drinking water. And not only that, the Amazon gets rain all year round, which can cause heavy flooding, which then can cause the water levels to rise and flood, and it makes transportation through the area way too dangerous and challenging. In our second spot, we have Antarctica. Antarctica is considered the coldest place on Earth's surface. It's also the driest, coldest, and windiest continent on Earth. How fun. Its harsh climate alone makes it one of the least explored places on Earth. Not only that, but this place is massive. So no wonder humans haven't been able to get to every region there. In fact, Antarctica is considered one of the last unexplored places on Earth and one of Earth's last frontiers. Let me explain why. There is a world of buried lakes and rivers under Antarctica. Scientists are desperate to explore it, but it's impossible to, you know, just like lift up the giant ice sheets and see what's up underneath there. So nobody really knows what it looks like under there or even what things are living down there. This discovery is now considered among the most important geographical discoveries of the second half of the 20th century. And in our number one spot, we have the ocean. I mean, come on, this one is kind of obvious, but it's also very scary. It said that 99% of the sea floor has yet to be discovered. Yeah, that means we have only explored 1%. Are you kidding me? Maybe that's where the aliens and mermaids are hiding, all the way down there. I mean, it took us a number of years before we could even reach the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest point in the ocean. It's gonna take us hundreds of more years before we can even explore half of the ocean. Now, this is due to a number of reasons. Number one, light can't reach all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. After 200 meters, the light begins to decline, so it would be super hard to see. Not only that, but the deeper you go, the worse the conditions get. I mean, the pressure down there is way too much for the human body to handle. Also, the temperature drops significantly the deeper you go down. So yeah, it's not the best conditions for exploration. In fact, it's easier to send a person to space than it is to send them down to the bottom of the ocean. That's insane. Starting off this countdown, we have Umoja Village. Located in Kenya, this village was founded in 1990 by a woman named Rebecca Lolosoli. It was created as a safe haven for homeless women, women trying to escape forced marriages, or survivors of violence, etc. The idea came to her while she was in the hospital after being attacked by a group of men. This village is barred off by a fence of thorns to try and prevent men from entering. There are around 27 women and 200 children living at this village. The women that live there still work so they can afford clothes, food, and their shelter. On top of that, their village is open to female tourists with hope that they will come in and buy some of their jewelry. They also charge a fee for anyone that wants to come in. Coming in at number nine, we have Snake Island. With a name like that, who would even want to visit it? And as you probably guessed, it is covered in snakes. This island is apparently home to around 4,000 snakes, most of them being golden lancehead vipers, aka one of the deadliest serpents in the world. It's said that this type of viper can grow up to 18 inches long, and it's so poisonous that one bite can kill you within an hour. As a result, the Brazilian government has banned anyone from ever going there. If you do, well, chances are you won't make it back alive. Legend goes that a fisherman arrives at the island in search of bananas, but was found days later in his boat, dead in a pool of his own blood. Then from 1909 to the 1920s, a family lived on the island to run the lighthouse. But according to another legend, the entire family was found dead after a group of snakes came into their home and attacked them. So like I said before, you don't ever want to go to this island. Moving on to number eight, we have Area 51. Of course this had to be on the list. Area 51 is a top secret government facility that is illegal for the public to visit. Anyone that does try to trespass can be charged, arrested, or even shot to death. This is what happened to a man in 2019. On January 28th, the man attempted to get into Area 51. He was then chased down by some cars for eight miles. When he got out of his car, he was shot dead. Another case would be the two YouTubers that were arrested in September of 2019 after they tried to sneak into Area 51 and were caught recording the premise. I know we all want to know what really goes on in there, like if they got aliens or whatnot, but curiosity killed the cat. 
Just saying. And our seventh spot, we have the Devil's Hole. With a name like that, maybe it's best you don't visit it. So the Devil's Hole is located in a national wildlife refuge in Nevada. You can tour the area, but access to the Devil's Hole itself is off limits. They have a sign and a fence guarding the area, and the sign reads as so. Due to the scientific importance of this area and its fragile nature, unauthorized entry is prohibited. Yes, they want to protect the ecosystem, but also so it is so dangerous to enter there. So Devil's Hole is like a little hole of water. When you dive in, it's filled with complex underwater caverns. Back in 1965, one night a group of four friends decided to hop the fence and explore the Devil's Hole. It was Paul, David, Bill, and Jack. Jack was on the lookout while the three dove in, but Paul never resurfaced. As a result, David and Bill both went back under to look for him, but then David never resurfaced. To this day, their bodies have never been found. Moving on to number six, we have Ramry Island. Tourists are banned from ever visiting this island because chances are your vacation will take a deadly turn if you decide to go there. This island is home to thousands of saltwater crocodiles and they weigh around 2,000 pounds. Even the small ones pose a threat to humans. They have the capability of killing someone twice their size. On top of that, they are highly aggressive and will attack anyone that enters their habitat. In fact, the most number of fatalities in a crocodile attack took place at Ramry Island. In 1945, British soldiers drove the Japanese fighters off the main area of the island, forcing them to flee into the marshy area surrounding the island. One problem, those marshes were filled with hungry crocodiles. As a result, 500 soldiers were killed by these crocodiles. So yeah, maybe don't go to this island unless you wanna be crocodile dinner. And of course, there's a number of stories of tourists going to this island and then being attacked and killed by these beasts. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Bouvet Island. Now here's the thing with Bouvet Island. You can visit it, but it would be a death wish if you did. Bouvet Island is extremely isolated and it's almost completely covered by a glacier. Its nearest inhabited land is 1,600 miles away. One way to get there is by boat, but it would take very long and you would be facing extreme weather conditions while doing so. As a result, most expeditions are done by helicopter. Even then, if the weather suddenly changes, you're basically screwed because the island is so remote and far away from other pieces of land. But in 1964, a lifeboat was found abandoned at this island. How did it get there? How could this little boat survive crossing the southern ocean? It's a mystery that still baffles many. But also, where did the passengers of the boat go, if they had any? We got no clue, just a couple of theories. And at number four, we have Vortex Spring. Vortex Spring is known for having pretty complex diving caves, but only those that have a diving certificate or are accompanied by an experienced diver can go there by themselves. In the 1980s, 13 people died in the vortex. There's one area in the underwater caves that are considered so deadly that it's blocked off, and people are prohibited from entering there. It's got this creepy warning sign with the Grim Reaper, and it's often locked with a gate. It's just far too easy for people to get lost and drown in there. But that didn't stop Ben McDaniel. On August 18th, 2010, Ben was seen entering the water near the caves and was never seen again. This case is quite strange, like there's a lot of pieces to it. Some say he faked his death because he owed the IRS a lot of money, and also he had a failed marriage, so maybe this was his way of starting over. Or Ben really did get lost in the caves and drowned, but his gear or body have never been found. In our third spot, we have the Bolton Strid. The Strid near Bolton Abbey is said to be the most dangerous stretch of water in the world. Just by looking at it, you wouldn't even think it's dangerous. I mean, the current isn't even that fast. But below the water surface are strong undercurrents that will toss you back and forth against the sharp, jagged rocks until you die. It's also fairly deep and it could just suck you down until you drown. In fact, it has a 100% fatality rate. Everyone that has gone or fallen in have never made it out alive. Their bodies also have never been found. There are a number of stories of people trying to leap across the river only to slip and fall in. In one case, there was a newlywed couple visiting the Strid. However, upon trying to cross the Strid, the bride fell in and the groom fell in also trying to save her. As a result, there are a number of warning signs all around the area trying to warn people of the Strid's 
dangers. But of course, a lot of people ignore the signs since the Strid is so deceiving and looks pretty safe. In our second spot, we have North Sentinel Island. The reason why you can't visit this island is because it is home to a tribe that will kill anyone who dares to intrude on their land. They live their own life completely isolated from the rest of the world. In fact, they still live a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. But a man named John Allen believed that with the power of God, he would be able to convert them to Christianity and help them. He believed that this island was Satan's last stronghold on Earth. So in November of 2018, he headed out to the island. Now, the people that took him there knew of the dangers and really, really, really didn't want to. But he was so insistent that they finally gave in. In fact, they were later arrested for doing so. John's first attempt at making contact with them didn't go as planned. As soon as he stepped foot on the island, several men came charging at him, firing arrows. So he fled. But on November 16th, he tried again. He got a fisherman to drop him off alone, and that was the last time anyone had ever seen him. When people went back there for him, they saw the tribe members dragging his dead body with a rope. And in our number one spot, we have the secret cave. It was the evening of August 17th, 2005, and five friends were having dinner together. They were Scott McDonald, J. Blake Donner, Jennifer Lynn Galbraith, Ariel Singer, and Stephen Hunley. While eating, the group got to talking about this secret cave, which was a legend where they were from. It's all about this cool secret cave slash hangout spot. Rumor has it, that's where human sacrifices were made, etc. But of course, no one thought it was a real cave. That's when Jennifer said that it was real and that she had been there before. The friends, not really believing her, asked her to bring them there. And so they did. So basically, up in the mountains by Brigham Young University, there was this small opening to a cave. The entrance was in the shape of a Y. But in order to get to the secret hangout spot, Jennifer told them they would have to dive down one area through this underwater tunnel to the other side where there was an air pocket. The tunnel was 15 feet and the gap they would have to swim through was 20 inches wide. So it was just enough for people to squeeze through. On top of that, someone had put a rope in the water so you could just pull yourself underwater with. So that's what the four of the friends did. Stephen Hunley decided to stay back. He waited for the group for about an hour, and then he decided to call for help. And when police arrived, they were horrified at what they saw. So it seems like the group of friends successfully managed to get to the other side, but they couldn't make it back. The police ended up pumping out the water so that they could enter. And that's when they found all four of the friends' bodies stacked up against each other. It seems as if the person leading, who was Jennifer, got stuck on the way out and then she drowned. It would then be impossible to swim over her. So then the second person that went swimming was stopped at Jen's body and they couldn't get back out because then the third person was coming in. So everyone was just blocked in this small tunnel. Slowly but surely, all of them drowned in this small dark cave. For safety reasons, this cave is no longer accessible. Woo!